Welcome out to the farm. I'm Jesse Cannon, and I've been away for a while. And uh, Brother Manly316 sent me a message, said, when are you going to post these 32 H&R mag gel tests? Well, I was doing stuff, and um, okay, fine. I'll get on it right now. So I've got several different loadings that we've I've tested out already through some gel. Uh, I did some chronograph readings. I really wasn't happy with you know, I, I've got something in my head and trying to get it to materialize because, you know, that's video editing thing. Uh, so we're just going to do what we've got going on. So what I did is I actually chronographed uh, five shot groups of each one of these different rounds that we've tested out here, right? These critical defenses, these Buffalo Bore 32 H&R Magnum Plus P's, right? These are, these are hot. Uh, and then these Federal Personal Defense 85 grain, it looks like it's got that Hornady XTP bullet on it. So because I've already seen these uh, with a five shot through heavy clothing and through bear gel, I'm going to put one of each, again, just you know, on camera for you guys now, into the gel. And then if as long as it is normally what I've seen from the other five, uh, then okay cool and then we'll, we'll go over it and talk about it i have two blocks that still have five rounds of the federal in them you won't see me shoot those it's already been done um, and i've been sitting on those for months and uh, but we'll go through and talk about those but i've put some other rounds into those as well it's going to look kind of ugly but you're going to be able to see how far these things penetrated and ultimately i'll tell you what you know if i'm going to carry 32 h and r mag what i'm going to carry uh, some guys have been asking for a update on these UC revolvers. I had four. I own one now. I got rid of three. One was for me, one was for my son, one was for my daughter, one was for the wife. Smith and Wesson, after sending them back, I had one of them that came back for a third time and it still wasn't right. Uh, things that aren't right and that aren't, they don't seem to be getting right as I'm having contact with the forcing cone right here on the front of the cylinder, okay? And this one's doing it too. It's, it's kind of getting dark, so we're gonna have to try to hurry up here. Uh, but right in front here, there's actually a little silver spot and uh, you're not gonna be able to see it. You have to trust me that it's there. But the problem with that is, you know, supposedly they cut the forcing cone on this gun and this has been the best of the four. Uh, the other three I sold to someone who was able to inspect them first and uh, I, I got raked over the coals accordingly. Uh, but anyway, I own a Ruger LC. Uh, I, I own a Ruger Ugly R. I think that's how you say it, right? Um, now in 327 because I still wanted something in 32 that was actually going to, you know, be what it was supposed to be. Uh, this one I'm going to keep for my own little gunsmithing project. I put a TK Custom Spring Kit in it, and I'm going to work on that forcing cone myself until it no longer makes contact. So we'll see how that goes. Worst case scenario, I, I ruined a gun that's already not right. So let's go ahead and throw some rounds into the gel here, and uh, that way we can take a look at them. So first up, we're going to do two of each. Now I only have three of these critical defense rounds left. I better pay attention to what I'm doing here. So I'll put in two federals, two critical defenses, and I guess I better get these buffalo bores out. Now y'all, these buffalo bores, they are stout, okay? Uh, I wanted this J-frame here in 327 Fed Mag until I fired this buffalo bore. And then I realized that, uh, go ahead and back up, then I realized, well, how am I going to do anything without glasses, you know? What would the world be without eyeballs? Definitely going to need those. But I fired that doggone buffalo boar, and I'm here to tell you, uh, <laughs> it's, uh, it's stout enough that I don't know that I need a whole lot more than that. And quite frankly, it puts up 30 super carry numbers. All right, so we're going to start out here. This is the Federal in the heavy clothing. Federal in bear gel. I think this is the Hornady, heavy clothing. Hornady in bear gel. Oh, y'all see that? Light strike. All right. Here we go. 
That was legit. All right, now let's set this round up. Now I put a spring kit in here, so I can't even blame that on Smith and Wesson. If it don't go for a third strike. There we go. All right. Well, that's very reassuring. So we're done shooting for now. So I can take off these eyes and ears. Let's come on down here. We were 10 feet away. And we have, this is typical, typical performance, all right? So as you're looking at that gel, I'm gonna grab this uh, sewing or quilting thing that I bought off of the Amazons. And uh, we'll go ahead and put it under our gel blocks. Take a look at what we have going on here. So the first thing we're gonna look at is the bear gel. And I could tell you which ones these are because they did exactly what they were doing. Now these are 20 inch blocks, not the FBI blocks. These are the uh, clear ballistics shooter blocks. So what we need to see here is these are 20 inches long. The Hornady Critical Defense with the bare gel, now it opens up, okay, and typically it has opened up through the bare gel, but not through heavy clothing, okay? Now, your penetration depth, that's about normal as well. You are not going to get the exact because you're not exactly 90 degrees over it, but right now it's just, if we take it all the way to the bounce back, it's just over 14 inches of penetration. The Federal, now these 32s, they penetrate very well. So these, these Federals are right around 17 and three quarter. And this Buffalo bore, that heavy, that's turned around backwards. It did not exit the block, but I'm telling you, it is right close to it, okay? Actually, it split the back of the block but did not penetrate into the next one. So we're gonna call that 20, right? That is great, but there's a price to be paid for that buffalo bore. Now let's go ahead and take a look through heavy clothing. Now, one of the things I noticed with these 32s, y'all, is, is they like to end up, they like to go butt first, okay? So they turn around backwards and they do this y'all thing. So as they y'all, they end up causing some, what looks like, awesome terminal effect on the gel. The thing I caution anybody about getting too excited over terminal effect in gel is as squishy as your midsection may be when you go poke yourself, if you poke yourself hard enough and it goes deep enough, you're going to notice that there's eventually something hard in there, right? We are not made of gel. We are made of muscle and bone and connective tissue and other organs, some of which have varying elasticities. So, Yes, it may look impressive in this gel, and I'll show you some here in a minute that are downright impressive, uh, but you know, it is what it is. So we look at this, what you're gonna notice is none of these expanded, not even the critical defense. So the critical defense came in and it's at 17 and three quarter. Your federal is base first, and it is just shy of 20 inches in the bounce back, and the buffalo bore is sitting right over here. It's over here in the next in the catch block. And that one is, I'm gonna call it 20, I'm calling it 22 inches. Okay, so 22 inches penetration. That is typical of what I've seen. Uh, one of those buffalo bores, I did have actually exit the, the, the block, and it, it was actually 26 inches of penetration. It blew through the blocks. I didn't catch it when I had a catch block up there. For chronograph, uh, the, I have the, uh, let me take a look here. For some of you guys that like to look and, and look ahead, the critical defense, the five shot average, I had average 925.4 feet per second. The Federals, they were running a little higher than that at 
And my Buffalo bores, guys, that's 1161 out of one of those UC revolvers. Now, I don't know if it's that particular revolver. That Buffalo bore is listed over the stated velocity on the box. So I started thinking about that and what sounds a whole lot like 100 grains, 312 caliber bullet, and moving around 1150, 1161, I remembered a Tools and Targets video with 30 Super Carry. So, you know, that Buffalo bore loading is pushing that little 32 h and mag and to lower pressures, but it's getting 30 super carry velocities. It's pretty impressive. And uh, I may know a guy that now owns a bunch of reloading equipment, if he can ever get his life together enough to put it all together, that I can pull an HST. I mean, a guy could pull an HST and put that maybe on one of those cases loaded up to the Buffalo bore charges, uh, one of those 100 grain HSTs and set that on there and replace it from the 100 grain XTP and see what kind of magic happens. We'll find out though, if I know that guy. So I did, I did capture a bunch of these different bullets. Um, you know, the, I, I'm gonna save you some, I'll save you some caliper tests. Guys, XTPs don't open very wide. Uh, I mean, they did, some of these XTPs did open when they're not through bear gel. Yes, they open, they peel back. No, they don't get very big. Um, it's really not impressive and it's almost kind of like shooting a wad cutter. Yes, it's a little bigger than a wad cutter, um, but you know when I do put out a, a full ammo test and review, I'll put out weights and retained weights and average uh, averages, all that, uh, all that nerdtastic stuff that we can geek out on. So, I want to draw your attention now over here to these blocks. These blocks are the blocks that I've been sitting on for months because I shot them and I was like, how do I talk about them? And then I got antsy and started putting extra rounds into them. So we'll go ahead and swap these out. But some of these rounds, uh, I ran some double taps and some of these double tap rounds are pretty impressive. Um, and some left a little bit to be desired. So I had high hopes for their uh, lead-free 60 grain. So this one was some through denim and some not. Let's go over what it was. All right, there. I think we're about even. All right, come on over here, take a look at this. So here are the five over here where my hand is, if you can pan over here. Uh, this area are the 85 grain Federals. Guys, right now, if you were to tell me, hey, you're going to go carry this 32 h and Magnum, load up with what you want. Based off of what I'm seeing as far as adequate penetration, uh, hollow point performance, I'm going to say that I'm loading up with the Federals, those 85 grain. Those Buffalo bores, they're pretty stout. You know, that particular grip on that Ultimate Carry Revolver, it doesn't, it's not padded at all, so you're, you're taking all that. It's, it's quite a bit in there, and really, when we looked at the gel performance, what did we get out of it? I mean, all of them were, look, right here it is, ready? They're all tumbling. They're all turn around, you know, going base first at some point. Or, uh, so why not carry the one that's going to give me, what, 18 inches of penetration or 20 inches of penetration and give me a lot less recoil for controllability? You know, yes, please. So those Buffalo bores, I, I don't think the juice isn't worth the squeeze. It's nice that we can get that amount of juice. I don't think it's worth the squeeze. Those Hornadies, considering the Federal is pushing faster and the Buffalo bore is a lot faster, I think we'd get better performance out of those critical defenses if we pushed them faster. But they're not pushing them to that speed out of that loading at 32 h and mag. So we look back at this block, we see our five in, in well adequate penetration depths here of those federal 85 grains. But I want you to look back here because I saw a video from Idaho Rifleman and this is gonna be right here between my two hands. Don't, don't look at that one lead guy over there. Those copper bullets, uh, the problem I have with those and that's a double tap loading, the, the lead free 60 grain in 32 h and mag. I fired three through heavy clothing and three through bear gel in here. And they're anywhere from 13 inches to just north of 10. Well, the problem with that is that's under 12. So I have three of them that hit 12 or higher and three of them that didn't. So 
to me, I, that's we're, we're not quite getting there, and it's a light bullet weight to begin with. Who knows what happens if you hit a bone? Probably doesn't keep going too far. Um, something else that was of note, and it, it's it's right at my finger here. You see that guy right there? Now he's under there. I don't know if it'll focus on him or not. You might have to just pan up a little bit. So that guy right there. If you were looking for a load that uh, was, you know, light recoil, but was going to give you adequate penetration, that black guy right there is a. It's just a lead bullet. It is a 32 long, and that's the S and B load. I don't know how to say cellular and bleo or whatever it is. I'm not that affluent, but that guy will penetrate greater than, shoot, he's just a touch over 14 inches. I mean, really, really low recoil. I hear a lot of people saying, oh, it's like a 22. No, it's not like a 22. It's like a 32 long, but it is very light recoiling. So, you know, you have a lot of options with those 32s. The last thing I want to show you before it gets too dark, and, and quite frankly, this is going to be the one that people are going to be like, oh, man, is if you come over here and take a look, well, I'll just move the block. Is this one is bare gel, and this is the 85 grain from Federal, and they look ridiculous. I mean, it looks like, and this is where I come back to, you know, the 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 wound channels here in this gel with these 85 grain. I mean, it, it would make you look at these 32 magnums and be like, man, this is awesome. And then why aren't all the police departments using them? Because there's got to be something to be said that gels gel and you know mammalian tissues mammalian tissue but look at the size look at the sheer size of the doggone cavities in these doggone 32s here come down and get to the side there we get more than one view i mean it, it's it's ridiculous the size that those from where they went in there and they tumbled but I have absolutely zero confidence that that tumble is going to translate into a correlating wound uh, if you were to use that against an attacker. Do I think you're going to get good penetration out of that? You bet you I do. Uh, but you know, before we get too excited over this, this gel disruption, um, you know, it's kind of like this term stopping power. You know, what unit is that? Well, I'm going to tell you I think stopping power is actually measured in gigadumps. Do the math on that. It's giga dumb, right? So it is something to note that it did happen, that they tumbled, uh, but I wouldn't expect any more damage than you know, their actual measurements of, you know. So, and then, you know, you look at, there's a, if you can see it here on the side, I actually stuck my knife, right? I stuck my knife down in there just to try to like, you know, make the point, you see? of what does it look like when your knife goes in there, right? But, I mean, it still looks like something. So as much as I want to discount the gel disruption there, it's, it's not nothing, but I don't think it's going to translate to something. Maybe it would be something if it was an inelastic tissue, lung or something. I don't, but, you know, that's like a sponge, right? So, anyway, enough rambling. I did gel stuff. Uh, I, I owed people some, some 32 mag gel tests. Uh, we got some done. Hopefully I left more questions than, uh, than necessarily answers, but did give some answers. Uh, but our format going forward, I want to do five through bare gel, five through heavy clothing. Um, when I do nine millimeters, it's going to be a same thing, but it'll involve four of these blocks uh, with a short barrel and a long barrel. When it's a revolver, I don't, I don't really have a, a use at least personally, uh, for something that's not a snub nose. So if I do a, a, a gel test with a revolver, it's, it's just going to be a short barrel because that's where, uh, quite frankly, concealed carry, that's where most of it is. So that's where we're going forward. I need you to like, share, subscribe. Part of my ammo test dilemma, right, is, is getting it how I want it. And if you want to see the chronograph stuff, then leave a comment. Let me know you want to see it. If you don't care to see it and you'd rather have a data table, then tell me that. Uh, because that's going to drive, I was thinking about it today, that's going to drive what I'm doing because I don't care to see a guy plugging away in a chronograph. Uh, but other, other people, they want to see that. And it's really not about what I want. It's about what you want if you're the one mashing the like, share, and subscribe button and leaving me a comment. Y'all are the customers. So I need to know what you want. 
Like, share, subscribe. Have a good night.